Hey, everybody, this is Pierre Quinn, and you're listening to the Leading Wild Green podcast, where my mission is to help you live, to learn, to lead with confidence. On today's episode, episode number 20, we're talking about the return of retro, why I'm not doing any resolutions for the new year, why 2018 needs to be the year of the practitioner, and why we keep betting on bad odds. So, listen up. Christmas is over. That's right. Christmas is absolutely over. This is the time of the year where everything is on sale. All the stuff that you waited in line for, that you fought with other shoppers to get is dramatically on sale. Tons of stores at the mall are having 75% off. There are tons of places where things are being returned because you bought last minute gifts or it was the wrong size or whatever. This is just the day of sales. And part of me is extremely happy that Christmas is over because some of these songs just, man, you play them over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. But it was good though, to spend time with family celebrating the holiday season and getting prepared for New Year's. Now, one of the things that that really got me about this Christmas celebration this year is that we bought our daughters one of those retro gaming systems. Now, we wanted to get the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, the Super NES, but it was sold out. It was sold out at Toys R Us. It was sold out at Walmart. It was sold out online. I didn't do the eBay route. So we were at the mall and they had, you know, the the bootleg version of this retro gaming system. And it came with two controllers and it had over 100 games Had Super Mario Brothers, Frogger, Burger Time, Contra, Duck Hunt, just some of the old classics, some of the games that I grew up playing in the 80s. And it was really intriguing watching my daughters play these games. Now, the graphics are terrible. You know, the games today are so lifelike. They're they're almost cinematic productions and the detail and the quality and the features. But this, I mean, you're there are pixels absolutely everywhere. But I watch my daughters and and my nephews have fun playing these old school video games. And we've just been surrounded in recent years by this return of retro, this affinity in modern culture to reach back into time and to bring some things forward. The high top fade has been has been back for a couple of years. Now the the penny loafers that I used to wear when I was in elementary school, that that's back. Retro games are back. Old school T-shirts, old school cartoons. Uh, all of these things are old school colors. People are wearing fanny packs again. So it's this return, this return of retro. And it just it just really goes to show you that when you make things of quality, when you make things that have an impact, that that impact can be felt for for a long, really for a long time. If you if you set a trend and it was really popular, there's a chance of that trend coming back around again. Now, I want to challenge you as leaders who are listening to this podcast, not to just work to establish trends, but but to work to create things of quality, to create systems of quality, to create environments of quality and environments of impact that have really a long shelf life and that people that people don't forget. There's still, you know, there's still a core group of leaders in American history and in world history we continue to talk about because their impact, the reverberations of their impact, the ripples of their impact are still felt are still felt today. So when you when you do things of quality, quality things have a way of lasting. And it's 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 really interesting having these conversations with my children about how life was for me growing up in this connection piece in 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 games. And sometimes they look at the games they play and the games that I used to play and they they laugh. But then after a while they get into it. Because it's it's still similar things happening in the brain, the similar sense of community and camaraderie and competition that all games really are are built upon. So it was good having that experience uh, over Christmas. Now we're headed to New Year's, just a few years, few days away from New Year's. 
probably do what I've done for the most of my New Year's celebrations, the whole Dick Clark thing. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> showing my age. Some of you are like Dick Clark. Dick Clark used to be the guy. Dick Clark used to be the man. Now it's Ryan Seacrest. The whole Ryan Seacrest live from Times Square, that whole concert celebration festivity thing. My my wife said she went to it one year, the whole ball drop in, in New York City, and she said it was terrible. It was it was just terrible. Too many people. You have to pay to go to the bathroom. It's it's terrible. So I'm watching for the comfort of my home. We've I've watched it from the comfort of my home for many, many years. But this year I decided not to do any New Year's resolutions. I'm not doing any New Year's resolutions at all. None. Zip. Zero. Zilch. Now that's not to say that I won't be intentional about developing myself in all areas of life in 2018, but so I'm not really going to do it the, the resolution route. So if you go on history, history.com uh, from the history channel, I'll put this link in the show notes. History.com gives you really a quick uh, blog blurb history of new year's resolutions. And it talked about this Babylonian culture back in the day where, where resolutions were just promises to the gods for good behavior. And if you did well, the gods would favor you. And if you didn't do well, the, the, the gods would punish you. We talked about Roman culture when it was really the same thing. And they started on in January because, because of this idea of the God Janus that looked backward in the time and forward in the time. And also this promise and festivities to, to do well so that gods would, would bless you. And it, this, this post on history.com just talked about how today, you know, it's not really a prayer to the gods across our culture, but we're really kind of just swearing by ourselves. We're making promises to ourselves in some areas of personal development and some areas of personal improvement. And there's some classic things that people say, oh, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to have a better attitude. I'm going to have a better job. All of these things, I'm going to be a better friend, all of these promises. And when you think about it, we're really just making promises to ourselves. Even when you put them on social media, you have a social media post and someone likes it or they make a comment on it. It's only just that. It's just one of those things that's in the moment and we hashtag New Year's goals or New Year 2018 or or however we bring attention to it. But we're really just making promises to ourselves. And the difficulty with making promises to yourself is that you continue to let yourself down. You continue to tell yourself when you've made when you've made a plan or a promise to do something, you continue to tell yourself, well, I don't feel like it today. I'm tired. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough support. I don't have enough encouragement. And because of those factors, you let yourself off the hook all the time. I know this from personal experience. Oh, I don't feel like getting up and doing the pushups today. I'm, I'm too tired. I had a long day. I don't feel like eating healthy today. I just feel like grabbing a burger and a candy bar. I, I deserve it. It's been rough. And you continue to let yourself off the hook. So this is what, this is what my, my paradigm, my frame of reference. And even knowing that maybe 40, 41% of people make resolutions, but only less than 10% at the end of the year would say they're successful. Now, those, are bad, those are bad numbers. Those are bad percentages. 40% of people make resolutions, but less than 10% at the end of the year say that they're successful in making these resolutions. And here's why. Here, here's why I think. And if you have a different reason, I'd love to hear your comments in, on, on my blog or on or wherever you find this video, wherever you find this recording. Some of you are watching this on YouTube because I upload it to YouTube. Some of you are listening on my blog or wherever. I'd love to hear what, what your what your opinion of, on this is. We, we continue to let ourselves off the hook. We continue to fall short. Less than 10% of people will fi find themselves successful because the only thing they have is an empty promise. The only thing they have is an empty goal. And, and many times we make these goals without really just thinking about our lives. So here's what I'm doing in 2018. And it's not resolution. I'm not promising myself, swearing by myself that I'm going to do this thing. No, here's what I'm doing in 20 for 2018 and in 2018. Number one, I am making goals. 
I am making specific goals for 2018. Not some generic goal. Oh, I'm going to lose weight. Nope. Nope. Quantify that goal. Qualify that goal to say, okay, I'm going to do X amount of pounds. I'm going to work out X number of times a week. I'm going to, I'm going to eat healthy for X number of meals in a week. I'm going to make specific goals. And I did part of this in, in 20 for 2017. I'm going to make specific goals and then I'm going to make plans to achieve those goals. So that knocks some of us out all already because it's one thing to make the promise or to make the goal or set the ideal. It's another thing to put the mechanisms behind it for reaching that. So, so what does that look like for you? My, one of my goals is every, every year to, to write a book and to create some leadership development material. So my, I have a strategy for writing books and then working on a specific plan. What's my plan? By this time, I'm going to have this done. By this time, I'm going to have that done. So you got goals, you got plans. So goal is the big overarching thing you want to do. And you want to drill down and make that thing very specific. And then you have plans and plans can be simple as timelines. Okay. If my goal is to write a book in 2018, then by quarter one, I need to have my idea fleshed out. By quarter two, I need to have a draft. By quarter three, I need to have this edited. And if I'm going to self-publish or work with a publishing company. So by quarter four of next year, I can have the book ready for distribution. Those are the plans. Those are the plans. These are the steps that I need to take. And plans needs me to strategy. And strategy says for each one of these plans, for each one of these milestones, for each one of these markers, here are the specific, specific things I need to do. So if my goal in quarter one is to have my idea flushed out for my book, then my strategy is I need to spend X amount of time every week working on brainstorming, having conversations related to the book and doing research. I need to do that for two to three hours every single week. And I'm going to do that for two to three hours every single week because I'm going to schedule it in. I'm going to reduce the number of times that I do activities that don't help me meet my, my plans and my goals. So that I have this strategy in place and I do that for every, every one of my plans. Cause if my plans don't have a strategy, a way for me to carry them out or implement them, implement them. They just become stuff on a paper, stuff on paper. It just becomes stuff on paper. So for 2018, I'm making specific goals. I'm attaching plans to those goals. I'm attaching, attaching strategy to those plans to help me meet those goals. And here is the big one. And I've talked about this before. I've talked about it in my book, Leading Wild Green. I've talked about it in my presentations that you need to get accountability. You got goals, you got plans, you got a strategy. You need accountability, accountability. You need accountability. You need accountability. I'll say it one more time. You need accountability because you continue to, and I continue to let myself off the hook all the time. You need to, to, to connect with someone who is working on, on goals of their own plans of their own strategies of their own, and you can help hold them accountable. Don't, don't let your accountability just be one-sided. Someone you can connect with that can call you, that can text you, that can email you, that can show up, that can work out with you, that can write with you, that you can tell them your milestones and mile markers and say, hey, can you support me? Can you support me in this? So you don't get down to the end of 2018 and become like everybody else who made plans at the beginning of the year or the end of the previous year. But 90 percent of them, 90 percent of us don't don't follow through. You don't follow through because we didn't have specific goals. We didn't make any plans. We didn't have a strategy for completing those plans and we didn't find accountability. And if you want to, if you want to take some steps in doing that, I want to help you. I want to help you become more accountable. One of the ways I want to do that is with my 2018 leaders, new year action guide. Now it's for free on my website. You can go to PRCQuinn.com slash take action 18. You can download it for free to 50 page strategy guide for taking greater action. Or, or if you want a hard copy, I'll put the link in the show notes. If you want a hard copy, a hard copy is available via Amazon. It's, it's really cheap. It's like five bucks. And if you get it on prime, you can get it in a couple days and get, get right to the strategy. Get, get started on, on that strategy for improving 
or taking greater action in 2018. Part of it, really part of it is that we, we don't sit, take the time to think and to process and to strategize and make those plans. And this 2018 leaders new year action guide will help you do that. So check that out. PRCQuinn.com slash take action 18. Download it for free or you want a hard copy and you don't want to print out all 50 pages. I have it available via Amazon. I'll put the link in the show notes and you can get it with Prime. I think you can get it in two days and you can begin setting yourself up for taking greater action in 2018. All right. So. So 2018, in addition to specific goals, specific plans, crafting a strategy and finding accountability, 2018 really needs to be the year of the practitioner. 2018 needs to be the year of the practitioner. And the reason why I say that is because there are a lot of us, and I posted this on Instagram earlier today. There are a lot of us who are very good at giving advice. We're very good at prescribing with other, what other people should do, but we don't do it ourselves. We're very good at giving people advice and commentary from theory. I was, I was listening to Candler, to to Chandler Bolt. Sorry, Chandler, for messing up your name. I was listening to Chandler Bolt and I used Chandler Bolt's materials for for developing my first book, Leading Wild Green. I'll put a link to him and his work in the show notes. And he runs this self-publishing school and really insights for people who want to be self-published authors. But he was talking about being in college and he wanted to study business. And being in college is sitting down in a business course and learning, sitting in a lecture presentation from someone from a business professor. And he asked the professor a question. He asked him, well, how many businesses have you run? How many, how, how, how give us the example of you being successful as an entrepreneur. And the business instructor told him that he had never run a business before. So he probably had the degrees by his name. He probably had the connections, probably had an amazing CV, but he never had the practical experience to run a business. And without that practical experience to run a business, there's just something you can't teach entrepreneurs. There's just something you can't teach business students. So I, I want to challenge you to be the year of the practitioner. I, I love it when I get advice from people on how to lead churches who have never led a church. It's it's. It's it's interesting to me. Now, they can give me some general principles on leadership, but the nuanced thing of of leading a church. I take a lot of advice from people who have led churches before or you get advice from people who have not led in any leadership capacity. They, they don't they don't know the basics of leadership itself, but they're trying to give you advice, advice from people who have never had children, advice from people who have never been married. Now, I'm not saying these people can't give you advice and they can't give you quality stuff. But in many cases, some of this stuff only comes from theory. And theory is not bad. Research is not bad. It's whole industries based on research. But there's something transformative about being able to have a conversation with a person. And your advice comes from your experience. You know what works and you know what doesn't work because of your experience. I know what works in some churches and what doesn't work in some churches because of my experience as a pastor. I know what works in some leadership capacities and what doesn't work because of the leadership responsibilities that I've had, not just in a ministry context, but outside of that ministry context. And I've been able to give people advice based on those experiences. Now, here's something that we all need to be very careful of because it's really easy to do this. It's really easy to give people advice that you're not willing to take for yourself. It's really easy. It's really easy to become a pure theorist of life and give people information and support based on hypotheticals. Well, if it were me, this is what what I would do. But not having the ability to back that up with practical experience on what people could and maybe should do because of the path that you've walked out. I, I want to just really challenge you to make 2018 the year of the practitioner, the year where you take your own advice, the year where you take a chance, the year where you do more, the year where you stretch yourself, the year where you make a difference, the year where you make a difference. And you can't make a difference by only you can't make the quality of difference that people need to experience in their lives 
just by being a theorist. I've mentioned this before. That's one of the reasons why we read biographies and autobiographies. We want to read about the experiences that people have had and how can we learn lessons from their experiences and apply those lessons to to our own lives. We want to apply those lessons to our own lives. I, I gave my first public speaking workshop, which is really crazy because I've taught public speaking for nearly 10 years and I've been doing leadership development stuff and and giving talks. And people have asked me over the years, do I do public speaking or presentation workshops? And I've never done one. I've taught it. It's crazy. Outside of the school context, the formalized structure of a college or university that haven't offered a course on this, but I gave my first one. And much of what I was sharing in that course, and shouts out to everybody who attended, we had a, a good small group and really it was a it was a power packed two hour session. And I'm doing another one in January if you're in the DMV area. So be on the lookout for that. Follow me on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, and you'll get the updates on my next public speaking course. But but the great majority, 99 percent of what I was sharing in that course I was sharing from my own experience as a speaker, my own experience keynoting large events, my own experience leading workshops and seminars, my own experience leading leading boards and chairing meetings and having to give presentations. And my credibility was not just that I studied communication in undergrad and graduate school, but my credibility was that there's a portfolio of speaking that supported or undergirded what I was actually teaching. And people have much more respect from you when they know you're authentically not just coming from a place of study from a distance, but you're coming from a place of advice from experience. So what would that look like for you in 2018? What are, what are the areas of life that you're consistently giving people advice in or giving people advice on, but the advice you have not taken for yourself? And what would it look like? What would the goals, plan, strategy and accountability accountability look like for you to become a better practitioner and actually imp- implement the advice that you give to people? And I, and I hope that you rise to that challenge in 2018 of not just being a theorist of life, a person who has good advice and and always you're so opinionated, but you don't apply the, the advice to your own life and make a difference in your life and the lives of others. Which is crazy when you think about it, because a lot of us are subconsciously continuing, continuing to bet on bad odds. We're continuing to bet on bad odds or on things that don't work out in our favor. Take, take for instance, the, the, the lottery. We were driving to New Jersey for, for, for holiday, for Christmas. And we saw the sign, the Powerball sign. And I can't remember the, I think it's mega millions. And one was like 200 million. The other's 300 million. I think some, some, some huge number. And I was joking with my wife, you know, what would it like be like to have $200 million? And some of us take that bet. We take that bet and we go to the store and we buy the lottery ticket, but the odds are not in our favor. You know, they're not in our favor. They're not in our favor in the slightest amount. When you think about it, the odds are really just in favor of the people who have the lottery, because when you add up over time, the amount of money that people spend every day on lottery tickets, it's a huge amount of money. But we take that. We we bet on those bad odds. We bet on the odds. We see these advertisements or postings come up on our social media feed. If I fill out this, I'll get two tickets from Southwest or I'll get a couple of tickets from Disney World or I'll win a five hundred dollar shopping spree to Costco or Sam's Club or BJ's or whatever those wholesale bulk stores are. And we we put in all of our information with the hope that we'll get one of these, we'll win some sweepstakes or win some contest and the odds are just, they're just, they're just not in our favor. And, it, and it's like that for just about every area of life. We have the scratch off things for cars, Just so much, so many contests that we're trying to enter into, but the odds are not good. And we continue to bet on them. Now, I'm not a gambling person, but you get the analogy. We continue to bet on things that are not in our favor. And what would it look like in 2018 for you to bet on something that gives that has better odds? What would it look like in 2018 to say, okay, I'm going to read whatever my particular area of interest is. If it's if it's 
health, if it's nutrition, if it's if it's technology, if it's relationships, if it's gardening, if it's photography, if it's science, whatever it is. And to say, you know what, I'm going to read 12 books this year. I'm going to read 12 books, a book a month on my area of interest or my profession or my passion or whatever. I'm going to read 12 books this year and see how much I grow as it relates to reading those 12 books and say, you know what? I'm going to cut out this one event or this one expense for the entire year. And at the end of the year, I'm going to make an investment. I'm going to donate it to charity. I'm going to take my my family on a trip. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, do something specific with this money that I usually spend on candy bars or, or Starbucks or whatever, whatever, because everybody has a thing. Every, don't be mistaken. Everybody has a thing that we spend time or, or money on. And to say, I'm going to, I'm going to put my wager on something that I know is going to reap positive returns for me because I, because I keep betting. I keep betting that if I keep doing things the way that I currently do them, over and over and over again, that things are going to be okay. I keep making that bet. I keep betting that, hey, I'm going to keep working every day super hard at this particular job. And one day they're going to give me the position I'm looking for. One day they're going to give me the salary I'm looking for. I say, if I just keep doing life the same way, one day my family's going to wake up and we're going to have amazing relationships and things are going to be great. And we keep taking that bet and making that bet and it never turns out. But what would it look like if you placed energy, you place enthusiasm, you place resources behind things that are actually going to pay off for you in three months, pay off in six months, pay off in a year, in two years. And what would life look like if you place bets on things that gave you better odds? That's what I want to challenge you to do in 2018. Wager on things that are going to give you better odds. Odds. And one way that you can do that, I mentioned it before in this podcast, is my 2018 Leaders New Year Action Guide that you can find at prcquin.com slash take action 18, or you can find it on Amazon. And with Prime, you can get it in two days. Really want to help you take better action. Really want to help you become a better leader. That's why I give these workshops, these seminars, the revision conference. That's why I do this podcast. That's why I answer emails with people who who ask for advice because I am really sold out. My mission is to help you live, learn, and lead with confidence. And I want to help you take better strides toward being a better leader in 2018, not just on your job, not just extracurricular, but in your family, in your circles of influence, because the world needs you to be a better leader. And you know what I need from you? I need reviews from you on iTunes, need reviews from you on iTunes. The more five-star reviews we get, the more we can take this message of effective leadership around the world and people can can see that we have something good going on here. Appreciate all the reviews that I've received so far. Appreciate all of the all of the support. Appreciate the hundreds of listeners that we get as we're building and growing this thing. And don't be selfish. Share this with somebody else. Don't just Keep the experience of this podcast to yourself so you can help other people go on their journey to becoming more effective leaders. Hey, that's all I got for this podcast. But once again, it's my privilege. It's my honor to do everything that I can to help you live, learn and lead with confidence. And I'm praying that you have tremendous grace and favor and blessing and breakthroughs and all types of crazy, marvelous experiences as we go into 2018. So until next time, take care and God bless.